This here is the Stuxnet spyware worm, but that's a mouthful to say, isn't it? So we'll call him Stu. We're not really sure who it was that created Stuxnet, but rumor has it that it was either Israel or the U.S. that created it for motives against Iran. Both countries are choosing to stay silent. Whoever it was that created Stu had very specific instructions for Stu to carry out. Stu was designed to infiltrate and sabotage the Bushehr nuclear power plant located in Iran. But how exactly is Stu able to successfully do this? Unfortunately, the answer is rather complex. To begin, Stu is designed to infect computers using Siemens window-based SCADA systems, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Now basically, SCADA is used in power companies all over the world to monitor and control machines that the company uses. Stu infects these computers by using a stolen certificate from the Microsoft Corporation, which it uses to trick the computer into thinking that it's not a virus at all, so the user has no interaction with Stu becoming on the computer. Once Stu has infected a computer, he is able to replicate himself as many times as he sees necessary. Then, when a USB is plugged into the computer, Stu is able to transfer himself onto that USB stick, which will then infect any computer that that USB stick is plugged into. So in this way, Stu is able to travel from computer to computer by traveling in the pockets of unsuspecting carriers. For this reason, even though Stu's intended target was the Bushehr nuclear power plant in Iran, Stu has been spotted in hundreds of thousands of computers all over the world. One of the things that makes Stu so advanced is his peer-to-peer -peer update potential. Now what this means is that if Stu ever comes across another Stuxnet worm, that's more advanced than himself, he's able to copy the updates that that worm has and give them for himself. So in this way, Stu can be the most updated worm that he can be. Once Stu here is as up-to-date as he can possibly be, he goes back to the USB and continues infecting as many computers as he can. Once Stu has infected a computer network with the SCADA system, he's able to reprogram the software, which causes a lot of trouble for the power plant that's been infected. So now we know how Stu infects a computer, but what exactly does Stu do after he's infected the computer? It's been discovered that Stu's main purpose is to sabotage the frequency converter in power plants, which supply the energy for motor speed in centrifuges. Now, in a power plant, centrifuges are used to separate the two different types of uranium found in uranium ore. It does this by spinning at extremely high frequencies. Now what Stu does is inconspicuously increases the rotation speed of these centrifuge motors to 1,410 hertz. Now 1,410 hertz is precisely the speed at which centrifuges explode. Stu then conveniently returns the centrifuge motor speed back to its normal level, making it appear as if the centrifuges had never been tampered with and exploded on their own. It's obvious, then, that Stu here isn't as innocent as he looks. Stu is designed to tamper with and sabotage nuclear power plants, putting human lives in danger. One thing about Stu that scares researchers is how public he's been. Why is an internet virus that's supposed to operate through stealth, why is it so obvious in infecting so many more computers than the original target? Its place in the spotlight is really causing worry for researchers. Another thing scaring researchers is the possibility of copycat hackers, people who would steal Stu's codes and use it to create another worm just like Stu. So the question on everyone's mind is, what do we do? How do we fight a worm that's literally affecting the whole world, putting human lives in danger, and sabotaging important communication, power, and transportation plants around the world? How do we fight something that's affecting everyone? One step being taken against cybercrime is through groups such as the OAS, or Organization of American States. 
Now, the OAS meets to discuss the issue of cybercrime and is working to take further steps to define cybercrime and figure out how to prosecute it. There are organizations like this all over the world, such as the Association of Southeastern Na Asian Nations, the League of Arab States, African Union, and many more. A law that has been put in place in America to help fight cybercrime is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which deals with illegally stealing information and illegally accessing a computer in the way that Stu accesses a computer. Finally, a precaution the entire world is trying to take is the Convention on Cybercrime. Now, this document was signed in Budapest on November 23, 2001, and was signed by 59 different countries, including 48 states from the European Union, America, and 10 other countries. Now, this document is the first international treaty on cybercrime and deals with violations of network security. The main goal of this document is to pursue common criminal policy aimed at protecting society from cybercrime. The whole point of this document is to foster international cooperation on such a sketchy topic such as cybercrime. So what is it that employers can do to help try and prevent the spread of Stuxnet as well as keep their companies safe? One thing employers can do to help prevent the spread of Stu is to routinely clean their company computers. It's been found that once Stu has infected a computer, even if antivirus software has been installed, Stu can still reinfect that same computer. So employers need to clean their computers out weekly, monthly, whatever they deem responsible, but they need to keep it clean so that Stu can never come back. Now, as discussed earlier, Stu is capable of spreading through devices that are plugged into computers. So I, devices such as USB drives, iPods, and digital cameras should all be banned by the employers. In this way, employees cannot infect company computers by plugging in their personal devices, and is a strategy to help prevent the spread of Stu. Now, we've covered quite a bit of information on our friend Stu here today, so I'd like to take a minute just to recap on all the major points that need to be remembered. Stu is a computer worm that was created by somebody to attack the Bashir nuclear power plant in Iran. Stu spreads through USB devices, and because of this has been found in hundreds of thousands of computers all over the world. Once Stu has infected a computer in a nuclear power plant, he attacks the frequency converter, which is in charge of motor speed of centrifuges. He increases the motor speed to 1,410 Hz, causing the centrifuges to explode. There are several things the world is trying to do to fight Stu, first of which is the Organization of American States, a group in America that is trying to define cybercrime and work on legislation against it. There are already some laws in place, such as the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, working on fighting viruses like Stu and cybercrime in general. Lastly, the Convention on Cybercrime is an international treaty working on defining cybercrime and working with jurisdiction between nations. There are little things that employers can do to help prevent the spread of Stu, which include cleaning out their computers and preventing employees from plugging in devices such as USBs, iPods, or cameras. And that is the end of a story about a worm named Stu. Or is it? Check out these super exciting sources. That's me. I made this.